What is up guys, in today's video we're gonna be talking about getting paid specifically from adjusters. Like some adjusters are easy, why is that? Some adjusters are hard, why is that? Some people call themselves a claim handler, what does that mean? What is a desk adjuster, what is a field adjuster? What is a TPA, what is a peer review? What are all these things? We're gonna be going over this terminology today. If you own a restoration company, you can't miss this guys. You might know this, but I bet your team doesn't. And if your team doesn't know it, then you need to watch this video and then they probably need to watch this video. So let's go. All right, guys, so in just a minute, I'm going to share my screen. But before I do, I want to say this first and foremost. I'm going to go over several terms, and I'm going to tell you what these terms mean. It is your responsibility to know what it means for you in your area. Various companies will call one thing this, and then other companies will call it that, okay? State Farm might call a claims adjuster this, and then that means this. But Allstate calls a claims adjuster this, and it's slightly different. A claims adjuster might be called a claims adjuster for Allstate, but a field adjuster for State Farm. That's what I'm telling you. Different companies use these terms interchangeably. Does that make sense? So in this video, I'm going to share with you what the various ones are, and then you need to know and understand what each carrier in your area, what do they mean when they say that? Does that make sense? An adjuster. What is an adjuster? An adjuster is somebody that is there to handle the loss, okay? That's going to be a broad term, but technically an adjuster is the one to whenever the claim is filed, the adjuster is the one that cuts the check. Now out of the adjusters, you can have multiple types of adjusters. You can have a desk adjuster, you can have a field adjuster, you can have an independent adjuster. A desk adjuster, field adjuster, or independent adjuster, they're all still adjusters. Does that make sense? But what they're gonna do inside of that might be a little bit different. So let's talk about a desk adjuster, or sometimes they'll call themselves a claim handler, okay? What does that mean? Like just imagine having an administrative assistant, the claim handler might be the admin assistant, at the insurance company, okay? So the adjuster is gonna be the one that potentially approves the bill to be paid, and the claim handler might assist in the communication. Now the actual adjuster in some cases will come out to your house and write you a physical check, okay? But in other cases, they will approve the bill to be paid and then accounting cuts the check. Every carrier's different. What's an example of one that will actually cut you a check? Field adjusters will typically come out into the field and they will cut you a check. What's an example of a field adjuster? Normally associated with reconstruction or recon. Recon is reconstruction. Guys, if you want, put a comment down below in the video if you want me to go over the terms and definitions. I can make a glossary or an index. I've started to do that, at least for some of my coaching clients. If you guys want that too, then let me know and I can maybe put together a video on that if you think that would be helpful. But a desk adjuster or a claims handler a desk adjuster may be a claims handler, but I think the biggest distinction is a desk adjuster works at a desk, the field adjuster goes to the field. The desk adjuster works at the desk, and the field adjuster goes out in the field. Many companies will separate their mitigation adjusting from their reconstruction adjusting. Why? Because they'll a lot of times need someone to go measure and sketch something to pay for the repairs, because oftentimes the repairs cost a lot more than the mitigation. So they want to give a closer look to see what was damaged and what wasn't. That'll be a field adjuster going out in the field. Remember that field adjuster goes to the field, desk adjuster sets his butt at the desk. It's more common that the desk adjuster will handle mitigation and not reconstruction. It's more common that the field adjuster does recon. It's more common that the desk adjuster does mit. Okay, I already told you that there's no one hard fast rule to apply this to everybody, but I think this is helpful, right? Because these are facts, but there's not one single answer for all of it. And so I just figure it's better to tell you all these things than to tell you good luck and just learn it on your own. An adjuster is just someone that handles the loss, cuts a check. A desk adjuster will typically work at the desk, usually handle more mitt than recon, okay? Uh, an example of a desk adjuster, uh, many companies will separate mitigation from reconstruction will be Allstate or State Farm or Liberty Mutual. They'll have a 1-800 number where it goes to a claims department. That will typically go to a desk adjuster, okay? The field adjuster for State Farm, Allstate, Liberty Mutual, stuff like that, that will be a field adjuster that will come out and they're typically writing for repairs. And why do they cut the check? Because typically the field adjuster will cut the check because they're already right there and they're gonna give it directly to the homeowner because they need to anyway, and they're already there. That's what the field adjuster will do. There are gonna be cases where the field adjuster might handle the mitigation too. So let's say for instance, State Farm, at the time of this recording, the field adjuster will handle the reconstruction, but if there's some mitigation and the homeowner's got like a $1,800 mitigation invoice, he may just take that from them, include it on the check because the adjuster wants to close the file. They need to get their file closed. I'm not saying that they all get judged or some of them, but like 
there is a metric and like it's in their best interest to get it closed sooner rather than later. Does that make sense? There's no benefit to leaving it open. There is a benefit to getting it closed, okay? That's one of the reasons why a field adjuster might pay for the mitigation, even though there's a 1-800 mitigation number associated with what they do. Why? If the field adjuster's there and he's got the checkbook and it all looks good, he may take care of it, but he may not. It's kind of hard to say. So desk adjuster typically handle mitigation. Field adjuster typically goes out in the field and handles reconstruction. Claim handler, what would be a good example of a claim handler? The person that you're emailing back and forth may be the claim handler, okay? And then they're gonna get all that information bundled up and then give it to an adjuster. Why would they do that? Because like, there's more skill to be an adjuster than there is to be a claim handler. Claim handler is kind of a pencil pusher. So claim handler, admin assistant, field adjuster, usually does recon, goes out in the field. Desk adjuster sits behind the desk, usually handles mitt. Hopefully this is helpful. Drop a comment, let me know. Independent adjuster. They're normally gonna work for themselves or work for an independent house, but they'll be hired by companies like, for instance, USAA will have independent adjusters and they'll have staff adjusters, which I didn't put staff adjuster on here. But staff adjuster isn't necessarily that relevant, but here, I guess I'll, I'll put it here for you, okay? And staff adjuster might just mean they only work for State Farm. They only work for Allstate. They only work for USAA. That's what staff adjuster means. A staff adjuster is typically a type of field adjuster. And like, I don't know, as I'm sitting here spitting all this out, I guess there is a lot to it. There's no single way to organize this, guys. I learned this because I've done over a thousand of these things, okay? But I'm telling you, if your team struggles getting paid and they don't know all of this stuff, well, this is the reason why, because these guys play games. And a lot of times your team is gonna say, well, this adjuster said this, what adjuster? When you guys do MIT and you do recon, there's more than likely gonna be two adjusters assigned to every file, a mitigation adjuster and a reconstruction adjuster. You need to know which one's which. You, your team needs to know which one's which. If I'm the owner and I'd say, hey, Eric, uh, who's the adjuster on this file? Are we talking about MIT, mold, recon? What are we talking about? You gotta be very specific, guys. This is a million dollar game. Are we clear? These are millions of dollars on the line. You need to be very specific. This is not some little handyman business anymore. These people have shareholders. If they can pay you less, baby, they will. And if you don't know all of this stuff, you're gonna be getting paid less because you don't even know who you're talking to. You got to know this stuff. You gotta be sharp. Are we clear? Man, now I'm yelling at you here. Peace. Adjusters, desk adjusters, claim handlers, field adjusters, independent adjusters. The independent adjuster, a lot of times, let me tell you this, here's another thing about it, independent adjusters. Why would they use a field adjuster? They'll use a field adjuster because either A, they don't have a staff adjuster local or they don't have a field adjuster local or they just can't get to it due to workload like they will send people and there's another one there's a, there might be a set of adjusters on the cat team so we'll do that too cat adjuster we'll get to that in a minute all right but they'll use an independent adjustment firm sometimes just to go out there and do some sketches okay once they have the field adjuster sketch and then the write-up of the scope of work based on how the field adjuster sees it then they'll send it in and they'll do whatever. Here's one of the problems with field adjusters. They're going to do this. They're going to point fingers and they're going to say, well, listen, I can't control what happens or I don't know what the policy says. I just write the way it writes. Like they're going to point fingers, baby. They're going to play games. Normally the independent adjuster doesn't handle mitigation. Not normally, unless it's a large loss. I mean, they can, but a lot of the companies, as I'm thinking about this, that have independent adjusters or use independent adjusters, they will typically have you send the mitigation directly to them. And then they'll use like a third party, like Code Blue or Ward Law or somebody to go through and try and beat your invoice down, okay? And we'll go through that on another training module. I'm not gonna get into that right now because that's a little bit different. I'll put that more in like peer reviews, third parties, etc. okay? We're just gonna stick to adjusters here. So an independent adjuster, a lot of times, they'll normally write just for the recon, maybe they'll write for the mid, but one of the bigger problems you're gonna find is they may or may not be able to negotiate stuff. They're gonna turn it into the carrier and the carrier is gonna do the thing. There will be a desk adjuster or a claim handler and an independent adjuster. If there is an independent adjuster, there will typically be a claim handler or a desk adjuster also assigned. Let me tell you this, whenever they start to point the finger at each other, here's what I tell you. I would just, a lot because the claim handler gonna say this, I can't help you, I just gotta go by whatever the adjuster wrote. Bullshit, that's what that is. That's so, okay, I'm just telling you, because here's what you're gonna say. I get it, here's the deal. This is where we're at, this is what needs to happen. I don't want this to get ugly. I appreciate you got standards, you've got policies. So do we, can we please put this thing to bed? and don't let them push you around. And if you know what I'm talking about and you need help, go to workwithshane.com. If you don't know what I'm talking about, still go to workwithshane.com. You're gonna learn a lot, you're gonna learn a lot. And I can help you get more jobs, and if you get enough of these jobs, you will learn what I'm talking about. 
because it's just a numbers game, baby. It's just a numbers game. So independent adjuster, I think we've covered that well enough. Uh, if you have any questions, put a question in the comment below and I'll go from there. Staff adjuster, it doesn't really mean that much. It just means they work directly for them. Most adjusters are staff adjusters, okay? Now, what is a CAT team or CAT adjuster? That might be an adjuster that comes in and a CAT means catastrophic event. Like there was a big event and that's what they did, right? CAT team, catastrophic event. A lot of times they'll deal with roofing or floods or whatever. That's just what that independent adjuster will be. So hopefully that's helpful. There is some more nuanced stuff. Some independent adjusters get paid more when their estimate's really high because they get paid a percentage of what they write. There's a lot of different variations. I can't really put too much in into it for you there because you're gonna be trying to take what I'm saying and run off on an example in your mind and you can't do that, okay? Just know this, you need to know all this garbage and you need to know it locally at your level for your market. What does State Farm do? What does Farmers do? What does Farm Bureau do? What does USA do? And if you don't know this stuff, you need to come into our ecosystem. Let me teach this crap to you, okay? Like very, very detailed training, okay? Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it in and comment below. We'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, I've got three things for you. Number one, if you haven't yet, click on my face below and be sure to subscribe to the channel, okay? We put out new content each and every week. Also, if you want me to help you grow your company, go to workwithshane.com. Workwithshane.com, put in your information, we can get on a call and see how we can help you grow your company. Lastly, there'll be some other videos right here. If you wanna watch more content about growing your restoration company, check out one of these videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.